live from the Mission Bay Conference Center in San Francisco, California. It's The Cube at Google Cloud Platform Live. Here are your hosts, John Furrier and Jeff Frick. Hey, welcome back everyone. We are broadcasting live in San Francisco, the Google Cloud Platform live event. This is theCUBE. I'm John Furrier, the founder of Silicon Angle. Show. My co-host Jeff, Jeff Frick, and we're going to wrap this up as a day wrap up of our on-site CUBE special presentation with the top executives and brains from Google, Google Cloud, and all their ecosystem top partners. Uh, Jeff, great day today. I got to say, I was very impressed with Google uh, announcement. A couple, couple observations. One is, the swagger was positive, but not over the top in your face. Google really brought home a clear message to developers that they want to make their life easier and provide the tooling and expertise that they need to continue the web scale front end piece, which is App Engine, and then really modernize that cross connect with containers by launching the container engine. And then not to be you know, through with that, they are really doing the heavy lifting on the back end by starting to bring out some of the big guns. The Google interconnect on the networking side. This is where I believe the secret weapon will lie within the Google army. So for, for us who likes to look at the crowd and look at the marketplace, you're seeing some, the first wave of some Google muscle quietly entering the market. And it's, it's all positive so far. I got to say, people are pretty impressed. Certainly Kubernetes has taken off like a rocket ship. We saw that at VMware and VMworld show. That was fantastic, and obviously Docker, one of the fastest growing open source projects of all time, is really highlighting the timing of cloud. Yeah, I thought it was interesting that Brian Stevens in his keynote put the containerization um, move and Docker in the same sentence in terms of transformational change to the computer industry as x86, as Linux, as, and as public cloud. So, you know, we, we talked to the Docker guys a while back, we first heard of, about them, I think, in AWS, uh, summit in San Francisco at the beginning of the year, but um, this is the first time anyone has really expressed the transformational nature of these containers in such a significant way comparing it to, to x86 and Linux. I mean, that is not small potatoes. Um, the other thing that, that I think is, is interesting from Google's point of view and where they come at the world and their unique perspective is they have such a large application portfolio. Unlike Facebook or Amazon, which is really kind of a single application, with, with the, the store, they've got such a broad application portfolio, and they really come from a culture of continuous innovation on the application side, which is a pretty unique point of view and a pretty unique uh, way of coming at this thing. And so, uh, again, the other thing Brian said is, you know, their 2015 strategic objectives are built about, around reliability and user experience. And so we've seen that in prior, uh, applications that Google's gone to market with where they continue to make this continuous improvement. So it was, uh, it was a good show, John. Um, some good stuff coming out of it. The Kubernetes, my new vocabulary word, really to, to be able to manage thousands of, of, uh, of the containers concurrently. And again, I think at the keynote they said that they launched like two billion, two billion a day. So what, what, what surprised you the most? You know, one, I, I was surprised that the new VP of cloud came from Red Hat. That's news that just slipped my radar. I just missed that. Um, obviously, that's a huge yeah, win for Google. Um, Brian is heading up and he's 12 years at Red Hat. And we heard, you know, we heard, kind of had some nice conversations with on a personal level, you know, did he take the test? And he said no, <laughs> but you know, and, but why he came here. He sees that fundamentally the next chapter in computing certainly is going to be written by Google, if not number one, if certainly in the top three for sure, uh, on, a, on a global scale. So I think that is a huge validation for me. And not, not, a, not a surprise, I mean, just caught me off guard in a surprised way. He's an awesome executive, certainly knows his stuff, and he, and, he, and he lived through the Linux war. And I think that's super important, because Google is an open source company. People might not know that, but uh, in the mainstream press, no one's really picking up on that. But they are so pro open source, but very academic like it in their research. Obviously, Sergey is working on the 10X projects. Larry Page is now taking over. And you've got Sundar Pakai, who is now running products at Google. And so the management team is starting to take shape. Uh, Sundar, obviously, Chrome, I broke that story. It was the first OS. I think I was the first one to break that kind of OS concept. And again, Google gets it. They're an OS company. They're computer scientists, Jeff. So I am really um, 
shocked to see that they're just putting that out right out front. This is like an operating system out in the open and they see it and very valuable. I don't think they're scared. And I think that was something that shocked me is that I, was, I thought they'd be more stealth and a little, little bit more camouflage in their, in their chess game and the strategic maneuvers. But they're just like, hey, we'll get the big guns. We're going to roll it out. We're going to win the developers because we know that market on the front end. JavaScript knows. This is stuff that they know. And certainly on the web, web scale front end, they've not got that locked and loaded. So I don't, see, I don't think they think it's going to be hard for them to onboard developers at scale and then provide the convenience of a massive back-end operation now with some real industrial grade kind of interconnects. So, you know, that's going to be their challenge. Can they pull that together? They got the bookend strategy, win the developers on this side, and the very small but targeted large-scale global enterprises, and then meet everybody in the middle, and I think that's where they squeeze everyone out, is that they'll just squeeze that middle of the market and win it all. Yeah, the other thing that was interesting is we had the analysts on talking about how do you measure this stuff? How do you, how do you, how do you quantify the winners? How, how do you, you know, what are the new metrics that they have to, uh, to put together when people's consumption of compute resources is based on consumption, it's not based on buying boxes. So what did you think of some of the, uh, the analysts we had on? The analysts were fantastic and I thought the Forrester guys kind of brought home some key points that I wanted to bring up to some conversations here, which is, you know, the Forrester takes a, a very, very conservative view. We would kind of kind of rile them up a little bit if you notice the, the commentary there, but they're conservative and they really look after the, the buyer, the IT buyer, the business buyer, and not necessarily in that order. I think they're actually skewing more towards the business owner, less towards IT in that commentary. So I was super excited to talk to the Forrester guys about where this all came from, how IT is really being displaced from a relevance standpoint, and that their new role of relevance is going to be more agile and more speed, and obviously that was key. I thought, um, you know, Stephen O'Grady, Red Monk is always great, love that firm. You know, James Governor has always been a big fan of those guys. But their real specialty, which is psyched to see, is that they picked a niche when no one really thought it was sexy, developers, and they kept to their knitting. And I got to tell you, they're kicking ass, and they're the number one developer analyst firm out there. They know the developers. You heard Stephen O'Grady say, look at Google can win the developers by providing just convenience. We joked, time to, not time to value, time to beer. Right, that is right. essentially a developer mindset, make my life easier. So that was awesome. And then IDC, interesting, was an awesome conversation because IDC is struggling right now with market share because they made their money and their bread and butter is on market share. Doing surveys, figuring out who's got how many ports, how many you know, boxes are in the data center, you know, server share, HP shipped X number of units, looking at shipments. Now you heard him say, we can't do that anymore. We cannot rely on market share data because of all the bundling, we're going to go back to revenue. So right now the market share uh, research uh, business is up for grabs. I mean, whoever can come out and really put together a methodology on the analyst side saying, this is how we are going to address the total addressable market, here's how we're going to dissect and evaluate share and performance, we'll win it all because no one's got that. All they can do is say, oh, Amazon, you're pure play, infrastructure as a service, so you're number one based on revenue. But they're squinting through just financials. There's a huge opportunity to figure out who's winning, and I think that's exciting for the marketplace, certainly for us to commentate yeah. on who's winning. Yeah, and what do you, and what do you measure? Some other some good things. Uh, Craig McLucky, who was on the VMworld, really again introduced some new vocabulary terms that we haven't heard much and we go to a lot of shows. Uh, cluster first, really <laughs> thinking of the data center as the computer and programming, developing as a cluster, which is a little bit different. Um, precision managed applications, you know, uh, Dave Vellante loves to talk about how at scale cloud companies, infrastructure costs are going to, you know, asymptotically approach zero, so where do you differentiate? And you know, his direct response to that was precision managed applications, which again is something they've executed within their own application suite to really get into the weeds as to how these things are working and to tune them and to get better performance out of the application. Don't, and then forget, the, don't forget empower decentralization. Gotta love it, gotta love it. And then kind of looking, looking ahead a little bit, it sounds like everybody better pay attention to Go because that sounds like that's getting a ton of traction in the developer world. What do you say, it's the JavaScript for, for, for young people, or maybe she said that. No, language of the cloud. Right, language of the cloud. So we got to keep a closer eye on that and, and make sure we, uh, we stay on top of that. And also, Brian Stevens mentioned that he's going into 2015 planning. This is some good scoop from theCUBE. Um, for Google, their 2015 mandates is a great headline, is reliability and user experience. Number one, 
is reliability. Number two is user experience. That is the guiding principle for Google's 2015 business plan for cloud. Great nugget on theCUBE. Yep. Mark the tape as we say. Empowered decentralization was another thing Craig said. I thought that was awesome. But I like how he, he is so passionate. He named Kubernetes. That was his kind of baby. And I think he's super excited by the performance. Yeah, and some other great sound bites. Because you know you like bumper stickers. We like bumper stickers. Robert Mal Mahalwald. Uh, at the end of the day, it's about speed, speed, speed. Speed to deployment, speed to scale. Mm -hmm. And containers, containers, containers. I mean, I, I'm, I'm impressed, John, by the amount of activity and really the transformational nature of the containers. And then, of course, Morgan Dollard, who uh, was great, comes at it from the networking perspective when you flat out ask him, you know, if he could give you a little inside baseball, what's coming down the pike, his answer was, it's just the beginning. You know, basically, you ain't seen nothing yet. So, you know, it was six months since they kicked off the first one of these. I imagine there's going to be a short cycle till we see the next one, John. And, uh, it's, it's like you say, they got a lot of muscle. Yeah, so in summary, in wrap here, Google is muscling into the market, and Gartner's Magic Quadrant research report that was just published, um, I saw an infographic on the web that we published. Since 2012 to today, the landscape of the market has changed significantly from the dominant leaders moving into niche leaders. So basically in just two short months, two short years I mean, you're seeing just the consolidation, the guys are turning into niche players. So you have the big guys muscling in, that's AWS by a landslide at this point, whatever you want to call it, Secretariat, thundering away in the lead. We'll be at reInvent next week to break that down. But quickly behind it, you've got Google and Microsoft. And don't forget IBM and HP and Pivotal are all scrapping together. So what I'm seeing is that federation around the uh, EMC Federation and Pivotal, Paul Moritz, if he can pull that group together and they can stay on task and actually ship code, they have a chance. Right now, I don't put them in the same league right now as Microsoft and Google, just in terms of shipping product. On the hype side, they're off the charts, but they got a lot more work to do. So, and then everyone else is just either a bit player or a specialty. Like CSC has, was a leader, now they're back in the neutral, right in the center point of all the categories because they're a management consulting firm who's now shipping cloud. So you're starting to see the service brokering really be a big deal. Yep. And I think that's where you're going to see some really rapid change. I'm expecting Dell this week at Dell World to really say, continue to amplify. We're not going to build the cloud. We might have a mobile device, but software will be the key. And I think services and brokering is the new new package, the tooling and packaging is like a virtual computer and if we can package that computer for the benefit of customer will win. Let me let me ask you to take out one more thing, John. We didn't get into really, because uh, it's more on the consumer side, but some people have not Google for a long time, is you know, they're getting all my information, you know, they're a little big brother-ish, do I trust them? You know, I'm trading value for my information for value-based ba applications. It's really more of a consumer side. But you know, is that going to be a hurdle that, that Google's going to have to overcome? Because let's face it, they're selling to the CIO, but their kids and their family are using the apps and they've heard some of this stuff. What do you think? Well, I think there's a big challenge here with Google. The privacy issue and the trust issue, the don't be evil motto, is kind of like been glossed over a little bit. I think people are really fearful of Google and the consumer side. Now, play that the other way. I think Google's not going to have a problem with this and I'll tell you why. They bring an event out like this, the cloud event, and they're opening it up. If you look at Google's moves right here, I got to say, from being on the ground here, Jeff, looking at their, their actions, they're not hiding the ball. They're out open front, op out front open book about everything. And they've been candid with us on theCUBE. They have theCUBE here. They want to share the data, share their knowledge. They're in open source, they get that mo model. And again, Brian Stevens is again leading, comes from NetApp. This is clear, that they want to take this head on and walk the talk with their openness. Okay. Now the converse thing on the other side is that the benefit Google has over everybody else is they got the Android side, they have the Chrome, they have the knowledge on the consumer side. So the consumerization of the cloud in the middleware is a huge opportunity for Google. That's where they're going to be vulnerable on the privacy side. When they start crossing over and you start to see security and authentication, these issues mull together. The middleware will be the battleground. That's where they're going to be vulnerable on the security and the privacy issues. But again, that's just reputation, that's just perception. They can be open and take care of it that way. So I'll ask you your favorite question. What's the bumper sticker? Uh, Google's a real player uh, in cloud. I mean, they have muscle. Google is, uh, is muscle, muscle built. I think they're muscle, muscle bound, muscle beach, whatever you want to call it. Google has 
serious power. They have large scale, they have smart people, they have software. They essentially have been using containers since they were around in a very effective cloud-like way. Not like they had containers as a concept on some of the you know, standard you know, side non sequitur app, but like really been using containers in the way that they're using today. So I think Google has a huge competitive edge and really could march down the field and score un, un, untouched in this game. And I think they have the opportunity to blow past Microsoft in a second. So I think you know, Google is a heavy hitter. That's a bumper sticker. Google's open source. I mean, Google's got a lot going on for it. I got to give them credit. You know, I just think they've been going a little too slow, Jeff, but you know, I think we'll see the speed. Yeah, well, they came out when they, when they feel they're ready. And, and uh, as you said, they're not hiding the ball. They're, they're coming out. They're making a lot of product announcements. So uh, it'll be fun to watch. All right, you're watching theCUBE special presentation live in San Francisco. This is theCUBE, our flagship program. We go out and wrap it up and get all the data and share it with you. And we're going to be live on tomorrow at uh, Dell World. Stay watching live. We're here all day long. Shout out to Greg and Patrick, our producers. And thanks to Google for sponsoring us to get here. They really were open and letting us do what we wanted to do and, and share the information and, and, and be candid and bring our commentary. So I want to have a special shout out to Google. Uh, great job for them. And Jeff, thanks for hosting. This is theCUBE. We'll see you later. And stay tuned. And stay tuned for tomorrow for Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman down at Dell World in Austin, Texas. It's the cube. And next week we'll be at reInvent in Las Vegas, so more cloud coverage coming. Thanks for watching. <laughs>